Hello, everybody. Welcome to Zone Defense. Be sure to follow us on Spotify at Zone Defense Podcast, on Twitter at Zone Defense Pod, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Zone Defense Podcast. Be sure to ring that bell to get post notifications. Also, hit that like button and drop a comment down below and let us know your thoughts on today's topic. Today, Chris and I will be doing another edition of the Zone Defense Basketball Hour. How's it going, Chris? It's going well, Drew. You know, uh, another good week of NBA action. You know, it's it's been a really fun start to the season so far, and I'm I'm really excited to see where the CU takes us. You know, there's a lot of teams really in the fold right now. Not too many teams that are uh, openly tanking besides our Detroit Pistons, which is very unfortunate. But you know, uh, it's going to be a really fun year, and we're going to have a lot to talk about all year with with all these teams. You know, maybe not all going for it, but at least you know being in the race. You know, you got some surprising teams like you know the Knicks. Uh, the, the Suns are really good too. The Warriors are better than expected. A lot of these, some of these teams, you know, were maybe maybe not expected to be as good. And and I think it's it's making things really interesting this year. But there's probably 28 yeah. teams that could all realistically have a shot at the playoffs. So I think we're gonna have plenty to talk about today. But I'll let you get into your first point today. Yeah, before I jump into my first point, I just wanted to say real quick, we got in some great traffic and viewership on our last few episodes. So thank you for everybody for listening, watching. Again, make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a comment. Um, while we have a question down there pinned um, for the stuff we talked about today. So be sure to drop a comment down in there. Here, let us know your thoughts. We love hearing them, as I said at the beginning. But thank you for everyone that's watched and give us some, some great yep, support here you. these last few episodes. But jump into my first point here. Um, it is a team that was all over the news to start the season. I think one of the, I think in terms of our team previews, I think this is the team that we spent the most time on headed into the season um, for all the wrong reasons. Um, but then fortunately uh, they got the giant uh, elephant in the room. That was James Harden out of the, out of, out of Houston. And now the Rockets are playing really good basketball. I think they've won four in a row. I think at the time of recording, they're currently still in 10th place in the West, the loaded West at eight and nine, but that's mainly because of the, the drama that James Harden caused um, off the field, off the court distractions. It's hard for anyone to play in that situation um, and getting him out. I know they had a little bit of a bump in the road there at the beginning, but then once they got Victor Oladipo into the building, once John Wall came back from injury, they've been playing some really good basketball. I think currently they're, since the Harden trade, I think they're a, the second or third best defense in the league. Um, so Steven Silas has them playing really, really well. Um, the lone maybe concern is the fact that their four wins have come against the Pistons, the Mavericks, the Wizards, and the Blazers. Um, and the Blazers, yeah, they're a good team, but they're also without a lot of their guys. And those other three teams, at least right now, the Mavericks aren't a great team. And obviously the Pistons and the Wizards are possibly probably the two worst teams in the entire NBA. So that's a little bit concerning. Um, however. Um, they've looked really good. As I said, their defense has played well, but also they have a really good starting rotation um, centered around John Wall, Christian Wood, DeMarcus Cousins, who seems like he's finally recovering from his injuries, looking really not looking as good as he was a few years ago, but still looking like a really productive player. Um, and then obviously Victor Oladipo too, um, as I mentioned at the top. Um, there are still some concerns that maybe they trade some guys here. I know Victor Oladipo might want to get traded. Eric Gordon might get traded. P.J. Tucker might get traded. But this is a team that just from watching these last few weeks, as I said at the beginning in the preview shows, Steven Silas is a really good coach. I think he's going to keep coaching these guys up. If they're able to bring in some more talent or even just keep the team they have, I think this is, could be a legitimate top six seed in the West, especially when you got teams like the Mavericks who are struggling, uh, the Suns are struggling, the Blazers have injury issues, the Warriors are up and down. I think this is a team that could definitely go on a run here. Um, and it's not like they're any slouch offensively either. As I already mentioned right there, those four guys, along with Eric Gordon, who's also a really good offensive player. So um, they're a fun team to watch. Um, and I really hope that... I really hope just be just to kind of stick it in James Harden's face that these guys keep playing well. Um, but I'll let you go ahead. What are your thoughts on the Rockets so far? Yeah, the Rockets point was also my first point for today as well. So, uh, and mine was, is Houston a better team? And this is just centered around this season, but is Houston better off without Harden? I think the question or the question is an obvious answer with yes, you know, because just how, you know, how distracted they seem to start off the season. They weren't playing very good basketball. Harden, you know, just seemed like he was a, a, 
you know, a, just a, a black mark on the entire franchise. And they finally let him go. They brought in Victor Oladipo, who I was, you know, questioning if he wanted to be here. I think there's a chance that he could be there long term. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think there's a chance. It yeah. seems like him and uh, John Wall are vibing extremely well. You know, there was concerns about them together as a backcourt because they're. I mean, Oladipo is a decent shooter, and neither one of them is is a as a knockdown shooter. But their defense together has been unbelievable. I mean, John Wall yeah. playing some great defense. Oladipo clearly one of the best two two way players in the league. You know, in my opinion, I feel like he's a great defender. Provides a lot offensively. You know, he's been kind of inefficient since he got to the Rockets, but he's still. They need. I mean, someone's got to take the shots on the team because you know, Wall. He's not like a insanely high volume scorer. They need someone that can shoot the ball a lot. You know, they got Eric Gordon coming off the bench doing that, but they need someone in the starting lineup. Oladipo is that guy. And uh, Christian Wood, I know we've already brought him up a couple weeks ago. I absolutely love how he's played this year, and he makes this team uh, just that much better. I think he actually makes them, which I agree with you. This is potentially – I think they're going to make the playoffs. And, I mean, whether or not they're in the play-in, I think they'll get into the playoffs through the play-in, or they'll be, like you said, uh, maybe six seed possibly. I think that probably five, six seed, maybe the ceiling – but, you know, I think this team is, is definitely going to be at least a play-in team now for sure because, I th- I mean, when you play that good a defense, I mean, you've seen it with the New York Knicks. I mean, you can you, when you can hold teams like the Cavs to 75 points in a night, 80 points, like you, yeah. you give yourself a chance. You don't have to make a ton of shots. And if you do make shots, you're going to win a lot of games. And that's what they did, especially against the, uh, the Blazers. I know it, it was tough. The Blazers are down a lot of guys, but they still have Damian Lillard, and I think that's an impressive win for a team that really yeah. hasn't played a lot of games together either. You're, you you got to factor that into. Yeah. They're already think, playing this good at defense. Yeah, and, and Wood, I think he missed the first two games. Oladipo was with the team, so that was actually their yeah. first. I think there was their first or right. second game all together. I think I heard they're calling them like the Wow Team or whatever. Wood, Oladipo, and Wall. They're like the Wow super wow team or something like that which is pretty cringy if i do say so myself but that's what that's what people are calling them um but yeah i mean i think they're definitely a play-in tournament team i mean looking at the teams because certainly they have the final play-in spot looking at the teams below them right now the mavericks kind of scare me a little bit but they just have it i know last week you were like these guys they might be championship contenders they don't look great um the real the real concern with them is their offense we kind of talked about it last week it's gotten worse this last week um so i still think the rockets are better than them the pelicans maybe they had a nice win um the other night so maybe they get things together here um the, Maybe we'll talk about the, the Lonzo Ball trade rumors a little bit later on as well. Um, they're a team that maybe kind of scares me. The Kings, maybe, but I still like no. the Rockets more than the Kings. No way. Um, they're a team that's very, very streaky. So it wouldn't surprise me if they get on a run here in a shortened season, maybe sneak into a playing spot. But um, I still like the Rockets better than all those teams. And then above them, you got the Grizzlies, who um, they are currently, in terms of win percentage, they're six, but that's because they haven't played in all week due to COVID safety, health and safety yes. protocols, um, as well as the Spurs, who I love the Spurs. They've won three in a row. They're currently the fourth seed in the West. They were almost one of my spot, one of my uh, points to make here. Um, but I still think I like the Rockets a little bit more than them. So if some of these teams tail off a little bit. The West is just so loaded. Um, the shortened season, this play-in tournament's making some really entertaining basketball, like you said at the top. Um, and at this moment in time, there's really there's only two game, two and a half, three actually, three games separating number four in the West and number fourteen in the West. So that's pretty nuts. Um, and we're a quarter of the way through the season right now. So really, anything is possible. It would not surprise me if the Rockets maybe they host uh maybe they host a play uh maybe they have home court advantage in the first round of the playoffs yeah. if they get up to that four seed. That's a bit of a stretch. I still like the Nuggets more than them, um, but I still think this team, as they're constructed right now, has a legitimate shot at a five or a six seed and not even have to worry about the play-in tournament. If they get into the play-in tournament, I like their chances of getting that seven or eight seed. But um, yeah, I mean you touched on it all. The real the only main concern is if Oladipo wants to be there. It seems like he wants to be there. Um, and that's also the one problem I have with the Rockets is uh, in his post game interview the other night he was talking about like oh everyone doubted me and I'm you know I'm I'm overcoming everything. It's like dude, you wanted out of Indiana. Like Indiana he offered did. you a huge contract extension, wanted to keep you, and you're the one that said you don't want to stay there. So how that doesn't make any sense to me. But hey, I, I get these guys; they got to find ways to motivate themselves. But I've never been a huge Oladipo fan going back to his days in Indiana, the college, because I'm also a Michigan basketball fan. Um, but you can't deny his talent. He's been a great, um, I, I know in terms of just overall talent, he's not better than James Harden, but in terms of the team fit, he's definitely an upgrade over James Harden, at least for what the war Rockets are trying to do. Yeah. And I think they're a really fun team to watch. Um, Christian Wood's an easy guy to root for. 
Boogie and Wall are coming off injuries. Guys who actually are overcoming adversity, unlike Oladipo. Another really <laughs> I mean, he did, have, he did have the bad injuries. So yeah, he's but he's talking about how people doubted him. So it's like, okay, your team, yeah, okay, Orlando doubted you, and maybe OKC doubted you, but like – Indiana didn't doubt you. Like, what are you talking about, dude? But uh, I, I get it from the injury perspective. Yeah, maybe he was just talking about the fans. Maybe that's what he meant in the interview. I think, was I, I think that's kind of what that. he meant. Yeah, I know. Sense, I, but. And, and I get it. I mean, Oladipo actually is one of – I actually really like Oladipo. He's actually, I would say, uh, like one of my top ten favorite players. Oh, in the sorry. I, 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 <laughs> no, that's, that's fair. No, I wasn't a big fan of his uh, – his post game interview, but I, I kind of get where he's coming from. You know, I think he's more talking about, you know, the injury peak. He wasn't that good in the bubble either. Yeah. Uh, he was very he was inefficient. Cool, yeah. he, he didn't get off to a very good stuff. I mean, even, even so far this year, he's been, you know, hit or miss, but I think, you know, he's still, he's still working his way back. That was, uh, I mean, what he tore his quad or something like that's a really rare injury. And it was like a, a really bad, it, he, he yeah. did something. It was like really bad. He was, I mean, he missed like a season and a half. So, you know, it's, yeah. it's, gonna take him time to get even even he said he's not 100 percent, which you know i think he, i think he said he's like 90 percent or something like that but uh you know you know i didn't love the post game interview but i still do really like him and the fit on this team you know i mean they need a secondary ball handler to take over for john wall and and you need somebody that's willing to take his take shots and he's been i mean he's definitely been willing to do that he's yeah. taken probably about 20 a game since he got to the rockets you know he he can get hot so you know you, you could rely on him for some offense but, you know i really just like the way they've been playing defense yeah. so far Full team and I think for sure. Keeps, yeah, they've they've been a team. I've been definitely circling their games to try to get get to watch as many as I can. But because they've been in, I mean, they haven't been together for very long as a team yet. You know, I mean, like you said, Christian Wood, and I don't think oh, I think that was their first game against the Blazers. So I think it's gonna be interesting to see them develop some chemistry together. They got it. They got a pretty good bench now that all these guys are back in the starting rotation. They got a, a lot of different guys that have a chance to prove themselves, and that'll even take place even more if PJ Tucker's let go, which I I think they will trade him before the deadline. Yeah. So some of these Jay Sean Tate like. Sterling Brown like players are going to get more of an opportunity, and I really yeah. like I like to see that a lot because there's some, there's some players here that could be could be there long term, and they yeah. got a lot of draft capital coming up, and and should have a lot of cap space as well. Going to be very interesting to see what they. Yeah, do. I just want to say two real quick things, and we can jump into your first point. Um, first, if Oladipo keeps playing like this, maybe Miami, desperate team, they're in a really bad spot. They were almost one of my points as well. I think they've lost six in a row right now. Um, they still need Jimmy Butler back and all that, but if Oladipo keeps playing well, maybe they get a Tyler hero and some sort of a trade package with Miami. That'd be awesome. And the second thing I want to say was, uh, I apologize. I don't know their names, but the Rockets broadcast crew is actually pretty funny. Um, back like in the preseason when Christian Wood went coast to coast, they said, who needs James Harden? And it was like, okay. And the other night when they played the wizards, um, Russell Westbrook was throwing up bricks per usual, and the one announcer said, "Well, we've gotten accustomed to seeing that in Houston." And I was like, "That's pretty funny." Um, but yeah, I, I love their how their uh, yeah. their broadcast crew calls games, and how they're very uh, unapologetic, and they call it how it is, and adds for nice little flavor to Rockets games. Um, but they're they're the encore product is just entertaining to watch for sure. But yeah. I'll let you jump into your first point here. Yeah, uh, I'll get into my first point now. Um, you know, so I was going to do the Houston Rockets thing, and, and we kind of touched up on it together. That's why it was a little bit of a longer segment. But I'll, I'll get into one that we could probably get into pretty quick. It's the, uh, you know, the Bradley Beal, Beal sweepstakes. I mean, this this team, you know, the Washington Wizards are an absolute dumpster fire. I would argue one of the worst teams in the league. Some, I mean, it makes sense because they've had a lot of uh, COVID problems, and they don't have a ton of depth behind behind Westbrook, who's been playing like crap, and then Bradley Beal, who's been unbelievable so far this year. I mean, the dude's taking 35 shots a game, but he has to because no, it's not his fault that he's taking so many shots. It's, no one else can score on this team. When you have Jerome Robinson needing to play huge minutes, you have guys like Garrison Matthews. Uh, I mean, even Cash has been called up to the uh, to the big leagues now in his rookie season. He's playing you know, big minutes as well. I mean, these are, a lot of guys on this team just don't have very much talent. So it's basically just him versus five guys every every night. And if he's not unbelievable, they have no chance of winning. So, you know, just I was just wondering, uh, you know, uh, uh, who should come after Bradley Peel? I mean, I think it would take not as much as Harden, but still a pretty hard, similar to Harden package to get Bradley Beal. And I'm going to give you the team I want to see him go to, and that is the Golden State Warriors. I think that they have uh, enough to, you know, to go get him, it would be. I know it would be inter an interesting fit once Clay comes back, but I think you could run a lineup out there with Steph, Clay, and Bradley Beal, and then just surround them with with guys like Draymond, and then 
I don't know who the center will be because I think James Wiseman would probably have to be in that package most likely unless it's like Oubre and a ton of picks. But, you know, I think it, it's a really interesting destination for a team that needs, you know, the, their championship window is going to be closing here soon. You know, I mean, they had, this year, obviously, it's it's it was closed the minute Clay got injured. But, you know, when he's back next, he should be back to start next season. If he is, I think they – immediately jump into a uh, two to three year championship window with those two guys, you know, Curry, you know, he's still got a lot of talent, but you know, he's, he's getting up there. Same with clay. You know, he's had these injuries probably, you know, age his career a little bit quicker. Draymond probably doesn't have that many more good years left, but you know, he's still a really smart player. So he can give you some production. I think the championship window is pretty much now for this team. I think they need to make a big splash either in free agency or, via trade and I think this is the way they could do it. I, I really am interested to see where Beal goes, but I think this could be the top destination for him. What's your number just give me your number one destination you'd like to see Bradley Beal go to. Yeah, so first I'll touch on what you said about the Warriors. I think that would be a great fit for the Warriors, but the Wizards already experienced the Kelly Oubre experience because they drafted him and then shipped him off to Phoenix. So I don't know if they'd be super interested in getting Kelly Oubre back, but if a Wiseman's involved, if they get a bunch of picks, that could make sense. I do like the fit there. I think that'd be awesome. Um, I mean, that'd be like, what, the probably the best shooting... Th- I mean, they had Kevin Durant once, too, so that's also really good shooting in terms of shooting, but if they get next year, they get Clay, Beal, and Curry, that's like three of the... maybe the three best shooters in the league. So that's... I like that fit. Um, but in terms of a team that what they can offer um, and where I'd like them to go, it's a team that I actually just mentioned in the Victor Oladipo sweepstakes, potentially. It's the Miami Heat. I think that's the one that's gaining the most steam. Um, I don't know if there's actually any legitimate rumors right now, um, but that's the one that seems like, kind of like with, again, yeah, switching sports here. With Matthew Stafford, everybody wants him to go to the Colts. It seems like with Bradley Beal, everybody wants him to go um, to the Miami Heat. And I, for me, the more I look at it, it just makes sense. Um, there are The Warriors, they're kind of in a weird spot where they're kind of win now because they have Curry, but they're also kind of rebuilding around Wiseman. The Heat are for sure win now. And I think if they get Bradley Beal, a, a threesome of Beal, Butler, and Adebayo, that's maybe the best in the league. I mean, that I know obviously the Nets have three really good players. But that's that's up there. Um, and I think the also supporting cast too. Yeah. With their, yeah. Um, the other thing with the Heath though is they're, they're really desperate. The Warriors, yeah, you mentioned it there. They got the clay injury, but they're still, I think they're currently in a playoff spot or they're, I think they're the ninth seed right now um, in the Western Conference. Um, the Heat are currently only a game and a half better than the Pistons and the Wizards, respectively. Um, and they've lost five in a row. I think they're desperate. Pat Riley's been known. At, we saw it just with the Jimmy Butler deal. Um, they got Goran Dragic at a trade deadline deal years ago. Um, Pat Riley's a guy that's known to uh, lay it all out there and try to get his guys. And right. I think Beal just makes sense there. I think the Heat could make a nice package of uh, – I, t- I saw some other podcasts talking about this as well where they could do um, – uh, it was like, like a deal centered around Tyler Hero. Um, and then it was like you get like a James Johnson or Andre Iguodala to make the money work. And then you throw in a bunch of picks. And then you also throw in Precious Achua, who has also had – I know he's a rookie, but he's had a pretty decent yeah, he has. decent start to his year so far. And I think that's a package that both sides would be happy about because um, he obviously get Beal. They're in a more win-now mode. The Wizards, yeah, they get some bad contracts in Iguodala and James Johnson, but they also get a, a young star. You, you've mentioned a few times, I think you mentioned it last week, he's only like 20, the hero is only 20 years old. He's only going to get better. Um, you get a young guy like him who could end up being a Bradley Beal in, a, in four or five years, who knows, um, as well as Precious Achua, who's a young, big guy. I know Thomas Bryant's hurt right now, but you put him, that's a nice That's a nice young front court as well. Um, it just helps both sides, I think. And I think it, it, it I, it's a team I would love him to see, I'd love to see him on, as well as a team that I think would really, um, it, with the Wizards, I think they would get a good enough package back in return. Um, and then I also just to kind of a funny one, I think he'd be cool if he went to the Cavs. I don't think it makes any sense at all. Or the Pelicans. I don't really know what they'd offer. The Pelicans, maybe a deal centered on Lonzo Ball. Um, get him, get, him, get um, Yeah, Lonzo Ball, a bunch of picks, maybe. Um, but I think Beal would look really nice there. Beal, Ingram, Zion. Um, I think that'd be pretty awesome. Um, the big thing with Zion is you got to get shooting around him, and there's not much – there's only a few shooters that are better than Bradley Beal. Um, so I think that would be, those are my, the Heat's probably my number one pick. And then the Pelicans, the Cavs, Cavs is more of a joke, if I'm being honest. The Pelicans would be my number two fit that I'd love to see him. But um, the other thing with Beal, though, I mean, he's, he signed that big extension. Um, he says he wants to be part of the next great Wizards team that brings the Wizards back up. Um, so 
who knows? I mean, they don't. The only they don't really have to trade him. So I think I know everyone. Wants he hasn't requested a trade or anything. It's just, yeah. he just it seems very frustrated right now. So people yeah. have kind of speculated that he wants out. Yeah. So it's just it's it's all speculation at this point. There's a good chance. I feel like last season we had the same talks for much of the year about when's Bale going to get traded, and then obviously never got traded. So um, I hopefully something cool happens. That'd be fun to watch. Um, I think the Wizards need to just rebuild and tear it down. And I think um, a team like the Heat, a team like the Pelicans, who want to win now, would benefit greatly from a superstar like Beal. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm still pretty skeptical that anything's actually going to happen. As much as as fun as these trade talks are, for sure. Yeah, no, I get it. I, I mean, there's definitely. I, I think there's a better than like a better chance he just stays with the Wizards. I, I it looks like he's very frustrated, but I don't. It looks like maybe something he may want to work through it at the same time. You know, it looks like you know he seems like more of a loyal player to me, in my opinion. Which I mean, I'm not faulting anyone for asking for a trade or anything, because especially him, because they've been so bad his whole basically his whole career, and he's the only reason they ever win anything in terms of games. But you and know, John Wall I, was pretty good when they were when yeah. they were good. He was pretty. Yeah, good. He was. <laughs> But Beal, Beal's definitely, I think, in my opinion, been their best player for a while. So I think it, it sucks for him. But at the same time, you know, he's he's making a ton of money. I don't want to feel too bad for him because he's been playing really good. But a, a couple other teams that just I'll mention really quick and then we get right near next point. The Sixers could maybe make an offer because, you know, Simmons hasn't been playing quite up to stands, but yeah. they're playing really well right now. And, and they, we may talk about them later, a little bit of a spoiler alert. Uh, the Nuggets could be another one. Michael Porter Jr. Yeah. Like a potential that's name that's been thrown out there a little bit. And then another one that I, I would be interested to see, but I don't know what they would offer is the Dallas Mavericks. Cause you know, like you said, their offense has been so bad, but they, they, at some point they need to enter this win now window. If they can make some off some package work that keeps both Chris stops, obviously they're not trading Luca, but if they keep Chris stops and then get him together, you know, I think that could be a potential interesting package. Probably not going to happen for the Mavericks. It, it, it makes sense for them, but I don't know. I have no idea what they would give up. They don't have a ton of young assets besides Luca and Kristaps. Uh, so probably a very dark horse team. You know, maybe a ton of picks could make it work. But you know, there's just a few teams I want to mention. You can get into your second point now. Well, yeah, I wouldn't mind Dallas trading Kristaps. I mean, I'm a I'm a Kristaps hater. I'll be honest. I don't think he can stay on the court for a full season. I don't think he's a legitimate number two star. He could be a really great three star. <laughs> to your point, if they do just trade for Beal, but uh, even I think if you trade Kristaps and uh, some picks or whatever, but they don't have a ton of picks because they lost their no. picks in the Kristaps deal from a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, it'd be a little bit hard. But if Wizards are like, hey, let's get a star because Kristaps, he's an international guy, still is able to pack a building, he's still a known commodity, a big name. Uh, for better or for worse, he's a guy that if the Wizards they want to be bad, but they don't they still want to put some butts in the seats once butts are allowed to be in the seats again um that could work too but um my neck actually we're going to stick with the bradley beal train because you mentioned it there briefly i am sick and tired of the bradley beal just you know let's get our uh, let's all get off our you know tiny violins and just start crying for him it's like give me a break okay like this guy yes he's scoring 60 points every night and he's a great player yes 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 but his team sucks and at some point you got to be like Bradley, some of this falls on you, right? I mean, if you keep losing games, maybe you play better defense, Bradley. Maybe you get your teammates to play better defense, Bradley. Maybe you get your other guys involved a little bit, Bradley. And I mean, I'm so sick and tired of every Wizards game, and I get it happens all the time. Every Brad, every Bradley Beal Wizards game, it's like he scores 60 points, and then you see like, look at this, how many points Bradley Beal scored in his last games, and it's a picture of Bradley Beal going like this or going like this. And it's like, dude, give me a break. Like, stop feeling sorry for yourself and like try to win some games. Because I mean, yeah, they played some decent teams, I guess, but it's just it's it's exhausting. And this was the same narrative that happened last year, and I said the same thing last year, um, where it was like, and a lot of other people have said it. A lot of people are starting to say it now too. It's like if he was such a great player, maybe stop feeling sorry for yourself and get out there. Stop saying like, "Are you frustrated, Bradley?" And he says, "What do you say? The sky is blue. Is, is the sky blue?" <laughs> That's a great comment. But like, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> exhausted of, of this storyline already, and it's only been going on for a couple weeks now. I get it. He's a great player. I'm not saying he's not a great player, but I'm saying like, and it's not as bad as James Harden. Bradley Beal, he's a great guy off the court. He's not going out to strip clubs. He's not overweight. He's not doing any of that crap. Um, so it's I'm not not that bad. But I'm just saying like. 
okay, like, like, let's not just keep saying how it's not Bradley Beal's fault. Some of it does fall on the star, right? I mean, you look at, I'm not a LeBron guy, but whenever the Lakers lose, the other night the Lakers got lost by double digits to the freaking Pistons. What? Um, people were still people were still going off uh, on LeBron, saying how oh, he can't do this, he couldn't do that. Um, and I don't know, understand why we're not putting some of the blame on Bradley Beal here because um, he doesn't play defense, quite frankly. And, and maybe, and I get it, it's not all his fault. Russell Westbrook, this is probably the worst Westbrook seasons since his rookie season or maybe ever. I mean, I thought this guy was going to be good. He barely plays. When he does play, he sucks. Can't shoot, can't do anything. So it's not, it's obviously very, not all, very it's efficient. Not all, yeah. not all Bradley Beal's fault, obviously. I'm not saying that, but. Um, at some point when scoring 60 points isn't where, I mean, we saw, I mean, I got my Kobe Jersey on right now. We saw with Kobe, he averaged 35 points a game the one year and the Lakers sucked. So at some point he readjusted his game and they won back to back championships. Now I'm not saying the Wizards are going to win championships or anything like that. But what I'm saying is maybe Beal realizes, Hey, maybe I should get some other guys. I know there's no other guys. As you said, there's no other guys that can get involved. <laughs> Um, but maybe just try something else. Try playing harder defense. Try to do something different rather than just laying on. And I'm so sick and tired of seeing the pictures of him. You know what I'm talking about? Like he's laying like this, he's going like this. It's all. It's just annoying. And I'm just tired of it. I'm done with it. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my PSA for Bradley Beal is to stop crying for yourself and start playing basketball better. I guess I don't know. Help your team out. I, it's not. It's not all him. But like you're scoring 60 points and you're still losing by 25 points, maybe play defense. Maybe that'll fix the problem rather than trying to score. Cause they're, they're the they into the worst. Uh, I know they're the second in terms of points per game or the second worst uh, defense in the league. Um, and then defensive efficiency. Let me bring that up real quick. Um, I think they are, they're also the second worst in terms of defensive efficiency. So second worst defense in points per game and defensive efficiency to the Sacramento Kings. So maybe play better defense. Bradley and maybe you'll win some games if the 60 points isn't working. So that's my, that's my rant there. Uh, yeah, you warned, yeah. You, all right. You warned me about this before that you were going on a rant about somebody. Um, I mean, you said it, you thought I was going to totally disagree. I, I do to some extent, you know, I, I don't think all of those images have been maybe a little bit frustration. I think the one when he dropped, you know, whatever, 47 the other night, and he was like, you know, leaning backward. I think he was more just exhausted. I mean, you saw they were doubling him, tripling him. He's yeah. still scoring. He was still getting buckets in that game. I mean, the dude had to take 37 shots, I mean, which is a ton, but I don't fault him for taking that many shots because they really just don't have options right now, especially with some, some uh, you know, Davis Bertans and, uh, you know, Mo Wagner, a couple front court guys have been out for a very long time. So those are, those are guys that could score for them. Uh, Thomas Bryant being out as well. Another guy that could, you know, get some paint buckets, but you know, he has to score. I mean, someone has got to score for this team. It's Ben Bradley Beal. I do agree with the fact that I think he could ramp up his, his uh, intensity on the defensive end of the floor. But I think the rest, I, I honestly still don't think it would make a big difference because then he'd probably be a little bit less, give you a little less on the offensive end. They would be a little bit worse offensively. And then the rest of the, the rest of their defenders suck too. So it's, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Cause remember he said, we can't guard a park car. It's partly him. He's not a great <laughs> defender. You know, I mean, I don't, when he wants to, I think he can defend. It's kind of a similar to James Harden where he's not actually a bad defender. It's just an effort thing with him. Personally, that's what I think. I think he's he can play some. He's shown some two-way ability before. I actually think he was a pretty good defender early in his career. But, you know, since the offensive game, is, game has gone up, I think, you know, his, the energy exerts on the defensive end of the floor has gone down a lot. But I think that's also partly to do with he has to score because no one else, they have to run every single offensive play. The usage rate has to be, what, 40% every time he's on the floor because they have no other option scoring. I mean, the dude plays 40 minutes a, a game. So so that part I disagree with you in terms of, like, I, I don't blame him for some of those. I think some of those images are are more of an exhaustion plus frustration than just him being, like, like pouting or whatever on the bench. I think it's more of him being, like, well, I, like, He's, he does look like he's he's really trying to you know will this team. In. I mean, you watched him against the Pelicans a few days ago. He was trying to will that team into that game, and it just wasn't working because they don't have much talent around him. And and Russ has been awful. I think if he plays a little better, maybe they could turn this around. He could take some of the pressure off Beal. Beal can play a little better defensively as well. But I do agree with that. I think he needs to he needs to give some more effort on the defensive side of the ball. But it's kind of a double edged sword because that they don't have scoring options, at least as of right now, once they get some of these guys to come back, uh, you know, maybe, maybe that changes a little bit, but then they just give them, they just need 10 point per game guys to go out there and just 
chip in a couple threes, a couple, you know, four for six, four for eight from the floor. They need a couple of guys to do that. They don't even have that right now. It's been tough to watch, but, you know, I do kind of get it. A lot of people pity party for him. The dude's making $35 million a year or whatever he is. I don't want to feel too bad for him at the same time. Like, I also do want to see him. That's kind of why I brought up the, the trade points. Because I do want to see him succeed, but, you know, at the same time, you can't feel too bad for him. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, I think Beal could be a better defender. I think he could be a better leader, right? Galvanize the troops. I think, yeah, you, some of it's just exhaustion, but just be like, hey, let's go out there and let's win this game, right? Let's let's be, because I know, I mean, I've played sports before. Yeah, not at that level, but I've played sports before. And <laughs> I know when your leaders, that when your leader is like on the bench, like sulking, it affects the rest of the team. So, and when you see the images everywhere, it affects the rest of the team. But then when the leader is like, Let's go. Let's do this. We can win. Um, and you said, yeah, some games he does it. Some games he doesn't. Um, that also can positively affect the team. But yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, it, it, it's he's in a, it's a really tough spot right now, and he doesn't have a lot of players on his team. Um, so he's he's got to score. Um, I guess I'm more just tired of all the coverage. And some people are starting to say this right now is like, when did Bradley Beal become the greatest shooting guard of all time? Like he's yeah, he's a great player, but I think he's and he used to be really underrated i think he's starting to become a little bit overrated i think a little bit because i mean yeah he's putting up monster numbers but it's like okay like yeah but like he's not great people are like oh my god like, we people talk about him now it's just like the pity parties and everyone's like oh my god he's best shooting guard ever it's like okay no he's not um so i guess i'm more irritated with just like the coverage and just the constant just like in your face of, of it all um rather than him actually um, on the court. But I do think, and I mean, a lot of people have said that a lot of the all-star ballots have come out too. And a lot of people are starting to talk about like, can you really put a guy who, yeah, he's averaging 35 points a game leading the league in scoring, but can you really start a guy in the all-star game whose team's only won three games? So, I mean, that's a fair point too. And I, people are starting to kind of ding him for that a little bit, um, which I like because I do think wins matter, obviously in the NBA. And it, yes, I mean, we saw the same thing with last year with Trey Young. He's scoring 30 points a game and it, results in zero wins um and i think beal's a better player than Troy young but the same things happened this year with with the wizards unfortunately but um i wanted to get out of my chat i think that's enough bradley he was obviously the biggest uh biggest storyline this week in the nba but um i'll let you jump in here to your next point yeah i mean uh yeah beal i mean obviously super interesting stuff but i think this is going to be an ongo that's why i i kind of brought it up before if you didn't steal one of my other ones that was the one i had crossed off was was about the bradley beal trade because you would probably talk about that any week but you know it is you know it's fresh in our minds around a big losing streak right now he's playing good basketball so it, it does come to the forefront right now but i'm sure this isn't going away anytime soon we're probably gonna be hearing this all the way up to the deadline and it's just a matter of if it actually happens or not but yeah i'll get into another another more positive team you know we talked about houston you know they've been a, a fun story, but this isn't a legitimate finals contender. I want to talk about a team that actually is a legitimate finals contender. It's no, it's not the Utah Jazz. Like everybody's getting copy on the bandwagon now after, which I do think they are. It's I'm not going to talk about them yet. A, a really nice win yesterday. Definitely a team that should be feared. I want to talk about the Philadelphia 76ers. They just took down the Lakers, you know, uh, Tobias Harris hit a, a clutch two point basket, but I want to talk about, I think this team, the roster as is, as constructed, can win a championship. I think this is the best team in the East. I, I really do. I think, uh, you know, the the additions they made in the offseason. Obviously, Doc Rivers is is getting the most out of Tobias Harris that he can. You I, you remember they were together with the Clippers for a couple seasons, and Tobias was. I mean, that's how he got a max deal. I mean, this dude was a, yeah. a really solid player. Don't get me wrong. A very good player. He played in Detroit. He was solid. I, I really liked Tobias, but it was a, you know, he was streaky, you know, not a star. I would just say a good player, you know, not nothing special. I think he's a star now. This guy is a, a, a really solid top 30-ish player uh, offensively, just totally just completely gifted. I mean, this dude, you know, he's not a he's not a physical specimen or anything. He's not like the best shooter in the world, but he's a really consistent 40% three-point shooter. Uh, definitely one of the best spot-up shooters in the league in my opinion. You know, he he can get to the basket, you know, he's he's getting quality looks all the time. He's shooting a very high efficiency this year. You know, I really like the way he's playing and he's playing good defense too, which is something he did, you know, early in his career. Maybe he's gotten away from it a little bit, but I think he's playing some good defense this year as well. And I I, I think he's been, you know, I I I want to, obviously we're going to talk about Joel Embiid too because it's a Sixers and he's playing the best 
for basketball. But I think he's been there. He's unlocked this offense. You know, he's he's shooting the ball way more confidently this year. He's scoring at a super efficient rate. I mean, adding Seth Curry doesn't hurt. The guy's shooting 60%. He's, he's the best shooter in the NBA right now. I mean, he's shooting 60% from the three-point line. This dude had COVID. It doesn't matter. He's balling out there. He's been unbelievable, an unbelievable story for them as well. And their bench has been better too. I mean, they're getting some production off the bench. It's it's really impressive to see. I, I really like the way this team's playing, and I don't even think they're getting the best out of Ben Simmons so far. I think that's going to come with more time with Simmons, with Doc Rivers. You know, I think his offensive game is going to come. He's playing, obviously, elite perimeter defense. He always does. He's a great passer. Uh, he offers a lot. Obviously, he was never a great shooter, but he's still a good offensive player. I think he's going to he's gonna start playing a little better on the offense and the floor. Obviously, Joel Embiid has been unfreaking believable so far, an MVP candidate for sure. And I don't, I don't see how anybody in this conference is going to stop him, man. I think he's been, he's playing with conviction. I think he's playing with heart. He seems to be in in the best shape of his life too. I really like the way he's playing. I really like the way this team's playing. I think this could be your NBA Finals team in the East. What do you think, Drew? How do you, how do you feel about? How do you assess the start? Well. Yeah, the start's been great, right? The start's been great. Um, ben Simmons he needs a little bit more. I, I wonder, he was reportedly, he was like about to be sent to Houston until, um, wait, yeah. He was about to be sent to Houston until Brooklyn came out with the final offer that ended up Harden going to the Nets. Um, if it wasn't for that, Harden probably would be with the 76ers right now. And it seems like maybe that's affected his game a little bit. Maybe the relationship there is strained. Maybe he's got to go to leave Philadelphia now. Maybe they trade him later in the season. Who knows? Um, but you mentioned that Tobias Harris, he's not going to win the most improved player this year. But when you look at how people reacted, the contract he got last season, the way he played last season, I mean, he was just a constant meme. People were just constantly just ripping on the guy. And you look at now, now, and he's, as you mentioned right there, he's one of the best players on the Sixers right now um, and is playing really, really well. Um, the best he has since he played with the Clippers, also under Doc Rivers. I think that was, what, two seasons ago now? Yeah. Um, and Joel Embiid, he's, he's an MVP candidate right now. Um, and Sixers are playing really good basketball. They got a solid defense, solid offense. Um, and I think Embiid's one of the top three MVP candidates. It's him, it's LeBron, and it's a guy on who I think is hands down – a guy who plays for the team that I think that's what I was trying to say is hands down the best team in the East. And that's the Brooklyn Nets. And that's Kevin Durant. I mean, yes, the Sixers are got to a great start, but I still think the Nets are just a better team than the Sixers. Yeah. They lost those two games to the Cavs. However, they've won four in a row. Now they're eight and two in the James Harden era, the Brooklyn Nets. Kyrie Irving seems remotivated. Of course, there are so many different things that go wrong with the Nets. There's also so many things that go wrong with the Sixers. Joel Embiid, um, a brutal foul on LeBron, who I think he should have got uh, kicked out, ejected out of the game. If anybody else did that foul on Embiid, they would have been ejected because he's the king, I guess. And he uh, he pays off the refs, whatever. Um, well, we don't have to get into that. <laughs> uh, but he wasn't ejected for that. He did get a flagrant foul, though. Um, but Embiid could get hurt very easily. We've seen in the past. Simmons has had some injury issues, hasn't playing up to par. Harris, as as much as I love him, former Piston, um, he could also tail off a little bit. Who knows? Um, and, and Doc Rivers, again, I know he won a championship with the Celtics, but he's shown in his entire tenure with the Clippers and at the tail end of his Celtics years, for whatever reason, when it comes to the playoffs, he just isn't a great coach for some reason. I don't know why, but he just can't get over that hump ever since he won that championship with the Celtics back in, I believe, 2008. Um, so there's a lot of things to go around with the Sixers and the Nets. I mean, they're big three, best big three, three of the best players in the league. They The chemistry stays. Um, I think they'll be really good. I think they're also going to make another move, try to get another big guy in the mix. Um, but Jeff Green's played well. Joe, is Har Joe Harris has played well. Um, I think – the Nets, I think they're they're still the best team in the East, I think. Even though in terms of record, the Sixers are the best team in the East, I think the Nets are right there. Um, which is kind of funny, too, because I remember last year, I think the two teams we were talking about the most were the Bucks and the Celtics. And I, I think those teams are still good, especially when the Celtics get Jason Tatum back. I still maybe like the Celtics even maybe a little bit more than the Sixers. Maybe even the Bucks with Giannis and Drew Holiday, maybe a little bit more than the Sixers. Um, I think the top of the East is really, really close, but ultimately... I got to disagree with you on this one. I think the Nets are still the best team in the East. Um, the see, team I'm most scared of, at least. See, I I, th I think about that. You know, obviously, I'm not taking for granted. I mean, I said I thought the Nets are going to win the finals before the season. That was before the Harden trade. 
I'm worried about them, man. They have zero rim protection. Think about Joe. Who's covering Joel Embiid on that team? I think he could legitimately average 45 a game against them. I think he's going to go absolute. I think they're going to match up in the playoffs, and I think the Sixers are going to get the job done. Just think about it. I mean, Ben Simmons, you can have him cover whoever you want. That's that's the first utility with him and Tobias Harris. I mean, Tobias Harris playing great defense. I think those two can cover two of their big three, and then it's just a matter of, you know, being able to shut down, you know, I, I would assume Kyrie would probably be the one that they leave without one of the, without, I think they'd probably throw Simmons on Durant or Tobias on Durant and then throw Simmons on uh, Harden, which I think those are pretty good matchups for them. I mean, Simmons has been an absolute shutdown defender. Tobias obviously isn't going to shut down KD, but he can at least make life tougher for him, in my opinion. I think he's a good defender. I think he could create some, you know, tough looks for Durant, which he'll probably make because he's He's been unbelievable this year, and he's been clearly their best player. Uh, you know, I think this team, you know, they have some depth. You know, Shake Milton coming off the bench, providing a lot of scoring. Dwight Howard, he's giving, uh, he's giving Embiid. You know, Embiid yeah. isn't playing quite as many minutes, and I think that's. I really think, you know, he's gotten into a lot better shape. So I think he's. I think his injury concerns might be, you know, I mean, he's still going to have some because he plays with a lot of effort. He takes a lot of hits, you know, shoots a lot of free throws. So he's obviously going to have those minor injuries. I don't think, I think he's going to stay on the court more. And he's, I think he's proven that he could, he could stay mostly healthy. He hasn't missed a ton of time yet so far this year. Only a couple of games due to some lower back injuries, which, you know, could, could be an ongoing issue, I'm sure, throughout the season. But I think he'll, he'll play through it. And he's obviously playing extremely well. It's not limiting him at all. But, you know, I think, you know, the addition of Danny Green provides some leadership. You know, he's not as good of a shooter anymore, but he's a, he's a pretty good perimeter defender. He could he could help out on a guy like Joe Harris. Uh, you know, Seth Curry has been shooting the lights out, like I said before. Uh, you know, Thibel off the bench could be an interesting defensive piece. He could he can make a big impact on that Sixers net series that I really want to see now. And then, you know, even a, like I said, Dwight Howard, Tyrese Max. I mean, this team, I think this team's pretty deep. I don't know, man. I think this best team in the East, I think they're going to win the East, man. I, I, the Bucks are, you know, they haven't been as good offensively or defensively this year. I think they're, they're having a little bit of, you know, let down hangover from last year. Obviously the heat aren't anywhere near what they did last year. Uh, the Celtics, you know, uh, they're, they're pretty scary too. I, I think that would be a good series to watch as well. And they're a team that definitely has made an argument despite having the injuries when they're all healthy. I, I think, they can put up a fight for the best team in the East. Obviously, the Nets not taking them for granted. I don't know, man. I, I'm buying into the Sixers. I'm drinking the Sixers Kool-Aid to start this season. You know, I think they're playing some extremely good basketball. Whether or not it can continue, it remains to be seen. I'm buying in, though. I think that this is the best team in the East, even with the Nets being there. Yeah. I mean, you made a good argument. Like I said, it, it's close. Um, I think if the if the Nets get a center. Then they're I think they're clearly the best team. I think that's opinion. true. But yeah, I mean they they're de- they're not they're not good defensively. Um, and if you look at the I mean the team they lost to was Cleveland, and they have like what like seventy three big men. Um, so it, it kind of makes sense a little bit from that point of view that they're they are going to struggle with size. And obviously Philadelphia is much more skilled than Cleveland. Um, you know Cleveland's had a pretty good season, but we talked about the Cavs enough last week. We'll jump in this week, but um, it's going to be close. Um, but I think it's going to be a really fun series. I hope we get it. Um, I think it's a really is a three horse race. I think it's the Sixers, Nets, Celtics. I'm just not loving what I'm seeing from the Bucks so far this year. Um, I think they're yeah. going to be a really. I think they, they. It wouldn't surprise me if Giannis gets going and they 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 play better and they're um, they go on a run in the playoffs. But I think it's it's Sixers, Nets, Celtics are the three best teams. Uh, even the Pacers have fallen off a little bit as of late as well. Um, but I, I still just I got to give that edge to the Nets a little bit, and I think I maybe even like the Celtics a little more than the Sixers, given how good they've been and J- and and the fact that Jason Tatum, who's arguably their best player, hasn't played for a large stretch of the season due to the COVID safety health and safety protocols, as well as Kemba Walker was out for a while because of his injury. Um, he said I think he said something about how he's playing for the first time. He feels pain free in, in, in forever, which is awesome for the Celtics. Um, so I, I think. I get what you're saying with the Sixers. I think they're a really good team, but I still maybe like the Celtics and the Nets just a little bit more than them, but it's it's really freaking close. But um, unless you have anything else to add about the Sixers, I'm going to go out west, and I'm going to talk about another team who I think is clearly the second best team in the entire NBA. No, it's not the Utah Jazz. As you said, if there's any Jazz fans listening, obviously the Jazz are great, 11-game win streak, but let's be honest. If the Jazz put the Lakers in a series, you're going to pick the Lakers to beat the Jazz. And if the Jazz play the Los Angeles Clippers in a series, you're going to pick the Clippers. And the Clippers are a team who 
go back a year ago, I felt like we were talking about them every single day. For like every day, there was a drama come out. Doc Rivers, <laughs> people don't like Doc Rivers. Montrez Harrell says something to the media. Marcus Morris is getting into fights. Paul George is calling people out. Kawhi Leonard isn't saying anything. He's going on his private jet or whatever, causing a bunch of off-the-court issues. There was zero chemistry on the court. It was nonstop drama, infighting. It was a mess, and it all obviously culminated in the uh, Nuggets 3-1 uh, blow, blowing the 3-1 lead to the Nuggets um, in the playoffs. It ultimately ended their season. But this year, I mean, they have – I think they're kind of underrated right now. I mean, they're very quietly – currently the second best team in the Western Conference behind the Utah Jazz. Currently, in terms of win percentage, they are a better team than the Lakers. Um, they've won nine of their last 10. They're currently on a two-game win streak. Um, a lot of that's been without um, both Kawhi, or both Kawhi and Paul George have, have missed or um, have missed a few games here, but Reggie Jackson stepped up, has been playing well. Um, and I think even though Kawhi and Paul George have missed some games, Paul George has looked really good. Yeah, he made that stupid comment, and I've been I've called him a clown on this show several, several times. Um, but he made that comment about how Doc Rivers was was underutilizing him or wasn't utilizing him properly. Maybe he had something right there. Maybe it was a mix of that. Maybe it was something about how because he was injured for large parts of last season. Maybe he's finally like healthy, he feels better about it. Who knows? Um, but he's looked really good. Um, I'll admit I was wrong about him. I thought he would have a brutal season this year, um, and he's looked really good. Um, both people, a lot of people have both him and Kawhi Leonard because Kawhi Leonard's also been great on the court. I think he's also been great. Or we have him and Kawhi Leonard as all stars. That's what I was trying to say. Um, but a lot of people, um, from talking about Kawhi Leonard, I, I like his leadership too. I feel like he he's made some. He's still a really quiet guy, but he said some stuff about how they were embarrassed about last season. They wanted to come into this season with, with a different better attitude. Um, and I think it's really shown. And I think him as well as Serge Ibaka too, has been instrumental for that team, both on the court, he's played really, really well, but also off the court, he's provided a lot of great leadership, great veteran presence, um, is an adult in the room as people like to say. And I think that's been huge for this team. Um, and just the other night, Reggie Jackson had a bonehead turnover and he was like crying like a little baby cub in the arms of Serge Ibaka. He was crying and then he uh, got him, got him, Serge Ibaka called him, or Serge Ibaka called him, that calmed him down. Um, and then Jackson went off and, and hit the, ended up being the game winning free throw of the game. And I think last year, I think the team was just imploded in a situation like that. So huge credits to Ibaka. Luke Kennard's looked, played decent. Uh, Nick Batum has played really well. Um, uh, Lou Williams looked okay. Um, they're just a really good team. And I think also got to give props to Ty Lue. I mean, I was one of those people that said, okay, well, he's LeBron's coach. He's not really a good coach. I mean, look at his, he, I think he's still a good coach. Um, I think you, you can't, you can't argue that anymore. And I'll be honest, I was wrong about that because, um, he came in here and I don't know, maybe he's not a great X's and O's guy, but maybe he's just a good leader of men, great chemistry guy. And he's really helped this team out a lot. So I think, um, you can't deny Ty Lue's coaching ability anymore. But um, what do you think about the Clippers? Yeah, no, I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. And I think Ty Lue is a fantastic X's and O's coach because if you look at some of their shooting numbers this year, I mean, they, it seems like they're getting players in just the, the best possible situations yeah. to succeed. I mean, they're, this is a team – it's super well-rounded. I mean, look at their numbers this year. I mean, they're, they're fifth in field goal percentage. They're, they're shooting uh, atop the league in, in three top three defense, defense too. And their defense, yep, exactly. They're shooting. They're shoot, they have eighty five percent free throw percentage. Which I mean, that's the little things that I think, puts. I think both uh, Kawhi and Paul George are shooting almost fifty percent from three both over fifty percent from the yeah. floor, and then forty five or so from three. I mean, yeah. Or yeah, I think George is around fifty percent too. Yeah. So, I mean, incredible Same. numbers as a team. I mean, you look at all their efficiency numbers offensively; they're unbelievable. Like I said, free throw percentage number one, eighty five percent for the year. That's unbelievable. I mean, that's a good percentage for one player, not a whole team. That's incredible. I mean, I mean, that's the little things that get you over the top when you're a good team, like the Clippers. I mean, these are, these are, I mean, making your free throws is the difference between, you know, winning a game by five and losing a game by five, you know, if you, if you knock them down, but you know, I, I couldn't agree more. And I've been sleeping on them. Absolutely. This year. I mean, they're 15 and five right now. You know, maybe it's a little bit of a uh, exhaustion from last year where it's like, Oh, you just think about them in the same light as last year. You know, I, you know, I, I came and I was like, Oh my God, this seems going to be so fun to watch. And I watched them and I was like, man, they really aren't that incredible to watch. You know, they're not as invincible as I thought they would be this year. I think it's, you know, it took, I know you, you forget about all these moving pieces. I mean, they, Kawhi and Paul George never played together before. Yeah. I mean, this is their second year together. It seems like they're absolutely doing a better job of, you know, take stepping up, taking leadership. And that has a lot to do with guys like Serge Ibaka, guys like Nick Batum, you know, stepping into veteran roles in the starting lap. You know, Batum 
you know, not a guy that's going to put up 25 a game, but you know, he, he's a guy that provides good energy offensive in, offensively can knock down some threes can play some good defense. And then same with Ibaki, you know, not a guy that's going to go out there and drop 25 for you carry your offense, but they don't need to be that. I mean, Ibaka is a guy that goes out there can, can give you 10 points, can give you some good energy on um, both the offensive glass and defensively in inside. You know, he's, he's a guy that has always been a really good shot blocker and a guy that yeah. they definitely needed. And, you know, they had, they've had, you know, players that have given them a lot of energy, like a Harold, but he's not a guy that's a, a really good leader or anything. I think Ibaka is, an enormous upgrade for them in terms of just fit on the team, you know, and having Ty Lue, clearly, I, I think, you know, he was really hindered by, you know, having, have, you know, he just didn't really do good in the LeBron, you know, LeBron's more of like that coach on the floor, you know, I think he handled well, I mean, he won, a cha- he won a championship, to be fair, he did right. win a championship. He obviously <laughs> did something, he did something right if he won a championship, but now I think a lot of that had to do with, you know, maybe him and LeBron, you know, yeah. clash with their idea, you know, maybe he tried to you know, throw the system more on LeBron. LeBron didn't like that as much. It kind of seemed like, you know, those two were always at odds, but I think he's fitting a lot better here in, in, you know, the Clippers, they got a chip. They obviously have a chip on their shoulders as a team, you know, going down early last season unexpectedly. And I, I think that, you know, I, I couldn't agree more, man. I think they, they're proven that they're right back up there with the Lakers. And, and I've even been sleeping on that big time. You know, I was just looking at some of the numbers. I'm like, man, this team is playing some excellent basketball and they're not even getting the, that much production out of guys like Lou Will or Luke Kennard, but you know, they've been good role players for them. I yeah. think those guys can handle more of a workload come playoff time. And I think they're going to be instrumental coming off the bench and, and they're going to give the Lake. I think we're going to get the Lakers Clipper series. We wanted last year, this season. Yeah. And it's going to, I honestly don't know. Awesome. I, I, I hope, know. Uh, I think the Lakers will win the championship yet. Like again, you know, they're playing great defense, but you know, this Clippers team, they are not to be slept on with the way they played this year. Yeah. I really hope, um, because I think the playoffs this year, it's going to be like in like June, I think, like when they would meet potentially in a Western Conference finals or maybe even in the Western Conference semifinals, depending on how the seeds shake out. Um, but it'd be awesome if they can get at least some fans in the building. I mean, it, it all goes going to plan. It seems like the summer, maybe things will be a little bit um, better in terms of COVID. But um, if they can get some fans in that building for a Lakers Clippers series in the same building for the Staples Center, I mean, that'd be awesome. Uh, but even if that doesn't happen, it's going to be some really great basketball. But uh, yeah, I mean, you touched on all there. Ty Lue, I think he's probably my coach of the year favorite right now. I mean, we don't talk a ton of coach of the year talk on this on this pod, but um, I like him a lot. I think Quinn Snyder, too, with the Jazz, obviously deserves some recognition, but he's been really great. Um, just overall, they're just a really great team, and I think um, it's it, they're almost like a post-hype sleeper team. I know we're not talking the NFL right now, but they kind of remind me a little bit of the Browns, right? Like 2019, the Browns, oh, they're going to win the Super Bowl. Here we go, and they sucked. And then this year, obviously, they made the playoffs. We're a really good team. Same thing here, but Going into the 1920 season, the Clippers, oh, they're going to be really good, and they just weren't chemistry issues, everything else. And then this year, they're they're looking like a really good team, like a legitimate finals contender. Um, because I think, I know we just got to know about the East, but I think it's it's Lakers, Clippers, and then it's like either the Nets or the Sixers or whoever you think is great in the East. And the Jazz are obviously in that mix too. But um, I just want to talk about the Clippers because like no one's talking about the Clippers, it seems like, and they're they're a really good team. But um, I'll let you jump in here to I think your final point. Yeah, um, you know, I, I brought this up before, you know, uh, we're going to play a little bit of it. It's not a total game or anything, but it's just something that, you know, I want to get your opinion on a couple of these guys that I think are are interesting to talk about here. So it, it's more of a, do you buy, you know, it's, it's, there, a couple of these are in different categories, but it, it's, it's, you know, players that are, sh- you know, so far have been kind of struggling in my opinion, you know, whether it's, you know, a, a veteran that's, you know, maybe, maybe they're, you know, nearing the end or whatever, or a, a younger player, you know, that has either regressed this year or even in the season. I think there's some, some interesting, you know, it's, it's just say, do you buy the downtrend? I guess is what we could call this game. You know, it, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I, I think, I think you're going to enjoy it. I'm just going to, you know, lay it out for you. I'll, I'll just give you, you know, each name I'll go in order. I'm going to start with a guy, you know, this team hasn't been playing super well so far. Uh, he's been you know, maybe and maybe not a guy that's always gotten it done with the athleticism, but always been a great leading point guard. It's Kyle Lowry. You know, this is a guy that's 34 years old. He's still averaging, you know, 17 a game. But the efficiency numbers, they're down this year. And, you know, the team isn't playing great. You know, they just lost to the Kings. They got off to a really slow start. Do you, do you buy that Kyle Lowry's best days are behind him? Do you think he's, you know, ending the near, near future? Do you think he's going to be, you know, hanging it up? Do you think he's going to turn into more of a role player? 
Yes, 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 and yes, yes. I uh, so I, I was asked one year early on this on this stock. Um, it sounds like we're kind of uh, in, in honor of the GameStop, uh, all that stocks. So we're doing a little bit of a stock game here. Little um, bit. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I was ready to sell on him last season, um, and he proved me wrong. I think he made the yeah he made the All Star game because he had that like charge or whatever um, towards the end of the game. Um, and he was good last year, but yeah, I'm, I'm ready to sell on him being an All Star. I think he can still be a role player. I don't think he's gonna like hang it up anytime soon. But yeah, I mean. Um, I think his best days are probably behind him now. I still think he's the best Raptor of all time. I, it'd be awesome if he retires a Raptor. Um, but I think if I'm the if I'm Toronto, if I'm looking to rebuild around OG and Siakam, I think I try to trade Lowry right now because um, it's a hard contract because he also paid a ton of money. I don't think he's really going to live up to that anymore. Um, he he is kind of like an Ibaka where he's he's a good off the court presence as well. But yeah, in terms of on the court uh, production, I think yeah, I'm ready to to sell on him for sure. I don't think he's he, at least the all-star caliber he was in the past for the last almost decade now. I don't think he's that anymore. I think he's uh, he's going to be best served in like a role player role for the rest of his career. Yeah, I, I mean, he's still, uh, look, don't get me wrong, he's still averaging 18, 6, and 6. I mean, he's having a good season, but at the same time, it's Kyle Lowry. It's not, I, mean, it's not I, feel, that. I feel like we're accustomed to a little bit better efficiency. He's only shooting 42% from the floor. 37 from three is not too bad. But, you know, from the floor, that's not great for him. I think he's usually a little bit more efficient in that regard. And he's really been struggling as of late, you know, with this shot. I think he's he's had a couple, you know, he's had a one for 10, a two for eight, one for five from three, even a three for 12. These are all in like the last seven, eight games, you know, not great from the on the arc lately. But, you know, obviously still a guy that I like. I think he's a solid point guard. I think he'll still be a starter in this league for the next two to three years. But I, I also, yeah. I, I'm, I'm buying the downtrend with him as well. I think he's going to, I mean, he's getting up there. He's 34 years old. I think he plays, you know, a decent role on a team as a starter for the next couple of years, maybe comes off the bench for a couple of years and then hangs him up. I think, but he's had a great career. It's definitely nothing to hang your head on if you're Kyle Lowry, but he doesn't play. You know, he's never been that athleticism monster or anything. He's always been that gritty, tough guy. So I think that definitely, you know, extends his career as long as he, yeah, he's had a pretty good spell of health too. So, you know, a guy that's always going to be out there giving out energy. I respect him, but, you know, yeah. at the same time, I think he's going to, uh, he, his body's going to, you know, he's, he's starting to lose yeah. a little bit, I think. In that, in that regard, uh, yeah, another player. He's got a. He's got over. Oh, he's got like an old man's game too. So I, I think he's always going to be a starter. But I don't think he's going to be like an all star level guy like he was. Like I said, for the last few years. Yeah, I, I totally get it for sure with him. Uh, I, another guy, similarly off to some. That, this is more significant. We have already touched up on this guy. You might be able to read between the lines here. A guy that is game is totally predicated off athleticism and it's, it's kind of sad because I've traded for both of these players in dynasty <laughs> basketball the last couple of days, but it's Russell Westbrook, man. I mean, I mean, what is he play play pretty good last night. He got ejected, but he, he had 26. Uh, he made some threes, you know, it's been a struggle for him so far this season. I mean, he's only shooting 38% from the floor, only 33%. He's still offering the triple doubles of old, you know, 19 a game, basically 10 assists, basically 10 rebounds. Uh, but the offensive game just hasn't been there in terms of scoring. You know, it's always been a guy that, you know, he's averaged what 25. He shoots pretty efficiently from two point range, very inefficiently from three point range. So, I mean, his three point percentage is up a little bit this season at 33%. Usually it's, I'd say around what, 28, 29, maybe 30. But I feel like he shoots a lot better from two point land too, as well, because he's so athletic. You know, he's, he's been a monster getting the rim, but he's also turning it over at a historic rate for him. You know, he could be, I read something, this could be. If if Russell Westbrook keeps up his five turnover pace, it would be only the fourth season in NBA history, and he has one of the other three <laughs> that have been over five turnovers a game. But it could be his second season over five turnovers a game, and it looks like he's you know even struggling to dribble right now. I mean, you've seen him, and you know he's if you watched a lot. I mean, I know you you mentioned to me a couple of days ago you haven't watched a lot of <laughs> Wizards, but I've been kind of watching him, trying to see you know what's up with them, and he's just. The ball's just bouncing off like his leg all the time and stuff. I don't know what's going on. If it, is it just an early season, you know, all around struggle for Russ, or is this more of a he's starting to quickly regress? I, I know obviously he's getting older, kind of similar to Kyle Lowry. He's gonna get a little bit worse as we go on, but like, is this a quick regression? Like, is he like not that good anymore, or is this just you know an early season struggle? He's gonna turn it around. Um, that's tough because like last season, I know everyone likes to just clown him because he was terrible in the bubble. 
Um, but there was people during the regular season before the shutdown that he was an MVP candidate. People were talking about this, yeah, is, the he was greatest, this is the best version of Russell Westbrook we've ever seen in our lives. He was um, and then, then the, the shutdown happened, then the bubble, he didn't play well, and obviously he hasn't played well now. Um, so it's hard for me to just say sell, but I, or like to he's I'm buying in the him declining. Um, but I think I'm I'm going to buy on him declining because he's he's old, unlike Kyle Lowry. He, he relies a lot on his athleticism, so he doesn't really have that old man type of game. So I think he, when he drops off, I think he's really going to drop off. Um, of course, I mean, LeBron's still athletic, but is, is Westbrook still, like as physically gifted as LeBron? I don't know. With modern medicine, it's hard to tell if athleticism will really mean that much as you get older. But I think he's definitely in decline. We've seen this year he's been injured a lot, um, and when he's playing, he looks really awful. Um <laughs> I guess I'll put it this way. It wouldn't surprise me if he, like, next season, he's an all-star level type of guy again. It wouldn't surprise me. But I think his days of being a bona fide MVP candidate are done. I, I would buy that. But I, it wouldn't surprise me if he's able to have, like, a one or two, like, all-star level seasons. Maybe not all NBA level seasons, but he's still, like, an all-star. That wouldn't surprise me. So, I guess I'm kind of, I'm buying that he's he's no longer a super-duper star, but I, I, still, I still think he's a star, and he'll be a decent player, I think, as long as he can yeah. stay healthy. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with you on this one. I think, you know, people are starting to talk about, yeah, Russ is washed. He's done. I don't think it's that, you know. I think I can excuse his bubble performance because you got to remember, he did have COVID right before going yeah. into the bubble. You know, that definitely – I, I, I mean, well, maybe he's so. still dealing with that too because I know uh, – I think Miles Garrett in the NFL got it, and he said he was still dealing with after you know, effects, out of shape after. or, you yeah. know, having so maybe, trouble. Maybe that's something – yeah, you're right. And, you know, I mean, yeah, I think that might have something to do with it. I think Russ, you know, when he went to the bubble, I think he just wasn't ready to play, you know, and, and that's partly because of the COVID concerns. I think, you know, I think he was one of the people with symptoms as well, if I remember right. So I think, you know, yeah. it was tough for him, in my opinion. I, I think at least, I mean, I don't know personally, obviously, but I, I can only speculate that, that that had a lot to do with his struggles in the bubble. I think this so far this season, he's had a couple injuries and maybe that's that could be where, he, you know, he's declining. You know, he's, he's you know, he was always a, you know, a guy that relied a lot on athleticism. He takes a lot of shots out there. He's still doing that. I mean, he's still taking a lot of hard hits, he, but he's not converting anymore. And he's, I feel like he's maybe his body's starting to catch up to him in terms of, you know, he's, he's getting injured a little bit more. I think, yeah, he can, you know, he, I agree with you. I think he could still be an all star level player, maybe like a top 20 guy. You know, if Beal gets traded, I think he's going to have to start. You may start seeing, you know, 30, 10, and 10 Russell Westbrook show up because you might have to. But, you know, at the same time, I think. His best days are definitely behind him. I think he's still a good player. I don't think he's totally fallen off. Like like people are saying, yeah. he's like totally done being yeah. anything near a star. I think he, I agree, he's still a star. So I'm not willing to write him off. But at the same time, he's not playing very good right now. It needs to change quickly. And maybe he's, you know, he's he's recovered from the early injuries. So it, it, he'll start. I mean, he played good last night before he got ejected. So I mean, eight for eighteen from the floor. It's not great, but for him, yeah. the way he's played so far this year, it's pretty solid. I mean, you can't really complain with that. He also hit three of five from down behind the arc. So you can't complain too much from that with Russ. Yeah. But uh, we'll get into another older player. This one should be really quick. LaMarcus Aldridge has been extremely, you know, I mean, he's been a guy that, I mean, it's felt like, you know, when is the ship going to fall off or when is the train going to stop moving for Aldridge? Another guy that doesn't rely a lot on athleticism. He's He's been a great jump shooter for the last few years, but he's been average. He's been around that 20 point per game mark. He's down at like, what, 14 points per game. He really stunk it up last night. He barely played. He only played 20 minutes despite being in the starting lineup. Maybe he got a little injured in that game. I, didn't, I watched a little bit. Didn't really see much. He just didn't play a whole lot. Is is you know are you are you done with is Lamarcus Aldridge just a role player for you now at this point in his career? Has the shoe dropped for him as being you know uh, still a, a not a star but a, a very solid good player? Yeah, I think we kind of saw it last year. I mean, I, know, I think he made the All Star team two years ago. He's never been like a bona fide All NBA type of guy, right. but he's always been a solid All Star for the most part. Um, I think we kind of saw that last year, and this year it's carried over. He's, like, he's had a few nice games. Um, he's had a few nice like three point shooting games as well. Um, but yeah, overall, he's just old um and i think he, he can still be um i don't think he can be as good as hal lowry but he can still be a type of a role player type of guy um good leadership kind of uh dude uh he could be a i i think we talked about this before i would love if he was um goes back to portland i think that'd be really really awesome to see but um, i think his days of being an all-star being a being a number two option on a solid team i think those are those are done unfortunately um i think he's an incredibly underrated player i think he's been probably 
one of uh, the best power forwards of the last decade. Um, but unfortunately, it looks like his his season or his career, excuse me, is definitely on the decline. Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I think Aldridge, you know, just based on longevity and consistency of performance, he's been one of the better power forwards of this last yeah. decade. He's I think been, his I think his his rebounding numbers are down too this year. Yeah, they are. He's only it's averaging true. like yeah. four rebounds a game, and they've got what well, you know a couple guards on that team. Kelvin Johnson's averaging seven. Yeah. I, I believe the Rosen's averaging more than him, and I think Murray's Dante averaging Murray, seven which. Too. Yeah. He's apparently a 11 rebound per game guy. It feels like he gets yeah. over 10 every night, but you know, uh, uh, another guy that's averaging more rebounds than him on the team, you know, Aldridge basically his entire game just predicates on the jump shot. Now I don't really think yeah. he's been much more than he's, he's basically just a stretch for doesn't play great as great a defense as he was. You know, he's always was a guy that was, you know, gritty, a tough guy, you know, thought he provided some good leadership. He's still going to give you those things. And, but I think his trade value has gone down considerably this year. I don't think it would take a lot for a team to, like Portland to come poach him off of the Spurs. Yeah. You know, they got a lot of guys uh, that, that could give them, you know, they need to find out whether or not these guys are part of the future. And they are playing good basketball right now as a team. Yeah, so they are. He's definitely contributed to that. But I think they have some guys, you know, like like Murray, like Keldon Johnson, like DeRozan still, which is definitely not a guy that has fallen off at all. He's playing some excellent yeah. basketball. And, and the three-point shots time. even, the three-point shots even been back for him a little bit. I don't know if you've yeah. seen, but he's shooting yeah. over 30% from three. And that's, big for his game you know i mean if he can stretch the floor like i don't know last night he went off he had like 30 points he's been a a pleasant surprise in the opposite direction you know i thought this is a guy that maybe was going to take a, a, you know a start trending down but he's been excellent this year and and maybe that's part of the reason why aldridge hasn't needed to be relied on as much so you know i think it's very interesting but uh, another guy this is this is a different you know a different trend uh similarly to russ a guy that well, actually, opposite of Russ, he was unbelievable in the bubble, and I think you might be knowing where I'm coming from this. But now he's back at you know his career 19, 20 points per game. It's Jamal Murray. I was wondering, do you think you know it's not like his? Obviously, he's not trending down as as a career. He's still what you know a young guard. It's nothing to do with that. But it's you know, are you buying that he is not anywhere near the player he was? Because in the bubble, if he played like that all year, he's a superstar, flat, flat out a guy that's what a top. 10, 15 guy for sure, despite him not being a great defensive guy. But he, now he's back at that 19, 20 points per game. Inconsistencies have shown. What do you think about, about Jamal Murray? Is this just a slow start? Or do you think, you know, he's back to just what, what he's been his entire career, which is just a guy that's good, but not great. Punch somebody in the nuts the other night too. I don't forget yeah, about I that. Saw that. I saw that. <laughs> um, so I'm not ready. I'm not. I'm not out on him yet. He's 23 years old. Um, yeah, so right. I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about. Is this the kind of player he's? Is is he more like this, or is he? You know, bubble. Like, are you buying that he's not the same player he was in the bubble, or is this just a slow start? I mean, he's still. Have, if you look at his average, he's still having a career career best year. It's just way off from what he was doing. Um, limited sample size, right? Playoffs are you don't play as many games in the playoffs, but yeah, he was like the best player in the bubble last year. Um, and I think maybe though he just liked the rims. I know um, every every basketball player, whether you're playing pickup or you're playing in the NBA, there's just some gyms that you shoot better in than others, and for whatever reason, maybe that gym just suited him best. So I think he's somewhere in between i don't think he's the best point guard of all time like some people were touting him as um heading into the season like he has that potential um it could still happen but i think he's more of just going to be like a top 25 guy in the league eventually which is still really good um he's not going to be a steph curry he's not going to be that type of guy he again he could be because he's still so young um but i think he's going to be somewhere in between he's going to be a 25 points per game kind of kind of guy i still think he's best suited as a shooting guard um so i think if he can find himself if the nuggets can get a, a, a like a legitimate point guard um or if he ends up on another team who has a legitimate point guard, i think maybe that could really help his his stats um he could be like a devin booker type of guy where he, he's playmates a little bit but he also shoots a little bit um but I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm not ready to just completely say he's never going to be a superstar ever, ever, ever. Um, but it is a little disappointing just because of how good he was in the bubble. And I think he's, I think he's better than he's. I think he's going to be better than he is right now. But I don't think he's going to be as good as he was in the bubble. Um, but who knows? I mean, maybe the playoffs come. Maybe he's just one of those type of guys that when the lights get super bright, he's gets up for the game and he's just really, really good. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, a fair, you know, estimate there. Uh, he could be one of those guys that, you know, uh, really turns it on come playoff time. And he, I mean, he was unbelievable last year. And like, like you said, I'm, it's, it's not him, me writing him off or anything. I, I disagree with you to some extent. I think he is more of, as of right now, that player that's, you know, just, just a good player, maybe a borderline all-star possibly. 
I don't think his ceiling is ever going to be a top three point guard in the league. I think he's more of the top, you know, 10 guy. I think he's always going to be around that. Mark. He's obviously going to improve, and he has improved slightly, at least going this year. Like you said, career numbers, not super up from the rest of his career, just, you know, a minor, minor upgrades basically in every category. He's still not a great defender. His, his jumper, well, it's, it's, Super inconsistent. He's, you know, he's that guy that can, he's, he can turn it on. He, you basically know which Jamal Murray you're going to get after his first couple shots of the game. You know, in my opinion, I think he's a guy that, you know, he needs to work on his consistency. And I think that, you know, if, if he plays, he has to play that good for the Nuggets to be a legitimate finals contender. And, you know, he hasn't been that this year. They're playing, they're starting to play better now that they got Michael Porter Jr. back. They got a couple other guys back. Uh, but we're going to have to see, you know, it's, it's, it's still, you know, I think it's still up in the air. I'm going to, slightly by the downtrend though i don't think he's anywhere near the player he was in the bubble i also do kind of agree with you that he is improving whether it's it's a small improvement that's kind of what i think is it's a small improvement but i think he's going to continue to get a little bit better and and maybe get to that all-star level one day but you know this is i got one more name on the list and then we'll wrap it up uh this is a guy you know that it's it's has nothing to do with you know his career arc because it's it's he's been a pleasant surprise you know for for the first couple weeks of the year first maybe even month of the season he was a I would say maybe the favorite for most improved player uh, it's Chris Boucher and he has been playing extremely limited minutes and it's weird man he's played he hasn't played more than twenty he played twenty nine minutes once against the uh, Pacers a couple nights ago other than that lately in the last seven games he hasn't played hardly at all and he has only scored 12 over 10 points twice in the last you know six games but uh he's playing extremely limited minutes he's not he hasn't been as productive as a shot blocker he hasn't been as influential and he really hasn't even been in foul trouble so i know it's a super small sample size i just want to bring a guy like this up though do you buy that He's just, I mean, it's not like a downtrend, but do you think he's just headed in the wrong direction direction on this rotation? Or do you think this is a guy that, you know, maybe just hit a little bit of a rough stretch is going to bounce back? Do you, or do you think that there, there's something wrong with him, you know, in terms of the fit on this team or something? I don't know, man. He is, he hasn't done anything for them in the last seven games and they haven't been playing very well. I don't really understand it. It doesn't make any sense. I thought he was going to be a starter soon. He's, he's totally backtracked on that. What do you think? That's another interesting guy because he's still really young, um, and it's hard to tell because for whatever reason, even when he was playing well, he still didn't play that much for some reason. They still wanted to bring him off the bench. I, I get maybe he wanted to get some spark off the bench, help that second unit out, um, but when you're trying guys out like Aaron Baines all the time or Siakam, who's been awful, um, and he's getting a little bit better, but he's not been yeah, great. I get what you're saying. Um, throw Chris Boucher out there for God's sake. I mean, yeah, I mean – I don't know. I mean, this is a guy who I, I would play more. I know he like you said, he hasn't played as well in the seven games, but um, he played well, and he, he's like one of the few guys on the Raptors who has had at least some success this season. So um, I think in terms of his Raptors, I don't know. It, it's tough to say. I'm gonna buy. I'm behind the downtrend just because he's so young, and it's it, he's still a relatively unknown commodity, right? Right. Um, and it's just it's just tough to pick. Uh, it's really hard. I, I'm going to say no. I'm not going to buy it. Um, maybe maybe he was misbehaving in practice. Who knows? Maybe uh, Nick he got Nick Nurse's bad side. Um, yeah. Maybe I, I'd buy his his downtrend in terms of the, his his career as a Raptor. Maybe he's like a Christian Wood type of guy who uh, has some success with the Pistons and then goes to the to the Rockets and is super good. Maybe the same thing happens with Boucher, where he ends up either in a trade package or he ends up on a different team. Or as we mentioned before, if guys like Lowry, if they start getting rid of these older guys and more minutes open up, then Boucher really sparks into a role. So ultimately, I don't I don't think I'm buying the downtrend, um, but I'm interested to see what what, what do you think. Yeah, I mean, Boucher, he was playing some excellent basketball for for a few weeks there, and he was he was I would argue their best player for a stretch there. And yeah. I just I don't know. I agree with you. It's it, I just want to bring him up because you know it's it's a lot different than the especially the first three names I brought up, which are veterans. I want to bring I just want to bring up a guy that you know we already addressed. You know, this has been one of the most improved players in this league, and I would argue maybe would have won the award through the first few weeks, despite Christian Wood and Jeremy Grant having the better numbers. He him you know being a relatively unknown commodity and just you know stepping up into this role where he was i would say the raps best player but despite the foul trouble he was incredible i mean he was basically averaging a 20 and 10 and with like four blocks a game for a couple weeks there and it's just gone out the window i mean he's barely playing he's playing what maybe 19 20 minutes a game he's only averaging probably about 
eight points and five rebounds, and he's he hasn't even been in foul trouble. That's the concerning part. I mean, he's only had one game with four fouls. Everything else has been, you know, really. Uh, he's only been at one or two fouls a game. It just doesn't. I don't. I don't get it, man. He's he's been one of their few players that's been able to stretch the floor consistently. You know, he's providing great energy on the defensive side. Like you said, maybe it's just some. Maybe he did something in practice. Disagreed with coach. Uh, nurse, you know, maybe, maybe something like, I, I honestly don't know it, but it's hard to say I, for this season, I'm going to buy the downtrend. It's like, at least for this season, you know, I think he's headed in the totally wrong direction in terms of what, what they need. Maybe, maybe he's just not, they're not, he's not giving them enough. I, I don't know, man. It's, it's weird, but you know, starting a guy like Aaron Baines who provides absolutely nothing besides setting up a campfire behind the three point line and shooting 33% from beyond the arc. I, I really just don't get it, man, but it, I don't. We'll have to see. It's it's tough. It was a tough guy. I want. I just wanted to see if maybe he had a different opinion than me. But it seems like we're pretty much on the same page with that. And now that, that was the last guy I want to bring up. But you know, it was. I, I think we. Uh, it was fun to talk about some of these guys for sure. Yeah, I don't really have too much to add in terms of Boucher. It'll just be an interesting guy to watch here because we, we we was in most improved player talk there. Um, I think our first episode that we did at this basketball right. hour, and now he's as you said almost out of the rotation. So. Um, hopefully he gets more minutes. I think he's he's a talented player. But um, I think that's it'll be it for this episode of the Zone Defense Basketball Hour. Um, be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Spotify and Twitter at Zone Defense Pod. Be sure to search us on Apple Podcast as well. Um, hit that like button below as well as drop a comment down below. Um, let us know your thoughts on Bradley Beal, potential trade destinations, whether you think he's overrated too. Uh, we talked about the Sixers being super good as well as the the fun game that we played there at the end. Um, let us know whether you're buying, buying in on the downtrends of uh, Jamal Murray, Kyle Lowry, Aldridge, and the other players we talked about there. But um, oh, and also we have some new uh, well, Super Bowl preview up uh, later in the week. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Um, but that's all for this episode. Uh, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you.